Hey guys, Ray from LoveyRV.com. So I'm continuing my summer projects here on the old Cougar. Gonna reseal the bum end of the old Cougar. <laughs> anyway, I've done the roof in the last few videos. If you want to check that out, done a lot of work, replaced the slide roof. I've also recoated the roof up there and resealed all the roofs. So now I'm kind of working my way down and the back end is one of the notorious spots that that has problems with leaks and seals so i've decided to finally pull off the flashing on the corner flashing you can see i got part of this one off here you can see where the two layers this is kind of a phylon coating it's kind of like a fiberglass coating and it's kind of on a piece of wood you can see that's kind of almost seems like wallboard it's got a thin coating on Anyway, those seal together, they're usually stapled. You can see a staple right there. They staple it all together. And then the flashing goes on, and then it's screwed on to that. And then there's a, a plastic bead that goes in there to cover the screws. Anyway, I have uh, kind of inspected. I got the bottom out here. Took the bottom layer off as well. Haven't quite got this one off. That's what it normally looks like there. You can see. Anyway, I did, uh, after last winter, I did notice down in this one corner, I have a small section of wood rot. Basically, the whole back end of this is mostly aluminum framing, which is good. It's hard for it to all rot out. But there is some places that they use wood for these ladder hangers. I just pulled it away right now. But where the where the ladder gets attached, they do put in some wood blocking, and uh, the top one's fine; it's dry. But down below, here the ladder thing's dry, but in there they have kind of a a piece of wood where where that kind of corner radius is, and they stuck a piece of wood in there, so that piece is partially rotted out. Let me get a close look for you. I'll get a flashlight, and we'll go in there and show you. So here's a peek at what I'm faced with. You can see right here, this is like a two by four, and I think they've stapled it from the aluminum. They put a staple right through this aluminum beam to this two by four, and right on the corner here, I got a little bit of rot, just a little bit. Most of this is kinda pretty okay at that end, but this end rotted out. If I go up a little higher, I can see they've put in some more wood there just particle board and down further there's some particle board there and that's basically for the ladders it's something for the ladder to screw into so i'm kind of happy that it's all a, a nice aluminum frame back here so it's not really the frame isn't rotting out just these extra doodads so i should be able to just get a two by four pull this one out and get a two by four and i'll be able to cut it round. I guess that's why they put this 2x4 in. It gives it something for the bottom layer to uh, they actually stapled it to it and then the, the flashing got screwed into it as well. But you can see the they kind of round off the, the lower flashing here so that's what they did. And I don't think it came from above. I kind of looked all the way up there had a good inspection all the way along there and nothing is wet up there. It only started to get wet right at the bottom here, right in there. And I think that's basically from the tire spray probably. When you're cruising along at high speed, you're gonna get a lot of high pressure tire spray here. I think it got up underneath. You know, there's some holes over here where water can get in. And uh, of course it's covered by the black plastic, but it kind of weeps through there over time. There it is. There's the plastic there. I kind of cut it away to see what was going on, but there's a bunch of black plastic that this is all covered with. So that's my theory that over time it weeped and I got it in the corner. The other side is pretty good. Yeah, I kind of had a peek in there. It's still wrapped, but that stuff is okay. It's not uh, soft or anything. So it should be good. And of course this side where the stairs live, that would block a lot of the sprays. So that would be make sense why this side isn't quite as bad as that side. 
and then the middle's fine too. So I just have to go and fix that one end, get myself a, a two by four, and then cut the round and replace it in there. Give you a quick look at the tools I'm using. Got a box cutter, a good straight edge on it. That's kind of to slice through the old sealant along the edges. And then I also have a thin screwdriver because there's a lot of staples, so I got to kind of pry the staples out. Then I'm using my uh, linemen. These are eight-inch linemen. They call them van pliers. They're good for pulling old screws out and great for grabbing staples if you see the jaws on them there. One of my favorite tools get used all the time. And of course, my other favorite tool, my hive tool that I use for uh, scraping, scraping away the old sealant. It's also good for getting under and prying, prying off the flashing. And then for resealing, I'm gonna give this stuff, it's called Seal Tight Corner Seal Tape. It's a Dicor product. And what you do is that's to go on the corner bead after you get it all cleaned up and uh, restapled. I'm gonna actually screw it back in rather than use those stupid staples they use. And then I'll put this on that corner. And then I'll also cover it with uh, um, butyl, they use some butyl tape. Let's go over here and show you what they had in there. Butyl tape, that probably helps to seal the screw holes there. And then, of course, I'll finish the, the edges of it with uh, some uh, non-sag sealant. So I have Lippard sending me out some of their Alpha Systems uh, non-sag sealant to give it a try. I used it over here on the flashing when I did the slide job and it worked really well, looks pretty good. It was pretty easy to get in there, so I'm going to do it again. So at the top here where that corner flashing comes up, it meets the roof here. But on this one it actually is, is an L shaped. It comes up and it goes along the roof for a while, all the way to about here, so it's actually screwed into the roof. Now I already have quite a bit of a, a turn of on tape there and have the roof coating. So I'm not going to pull all that apart. I'm just going to take off a little bit of the Eternabon tape here just so I can get the flashing kind of away. If you see over there, I've already done that side. I've kind of lifted it away. Then I'll just uh, put the tape as far up as I can get it into here. And then I'll redo this with uh, new fresh tape. This should work out pretty good. Never had any leak problems here, thank God, because these corners are really notorious for problems on the Cougar. Just the way the roof is set up, you know, a lot of stuff can pool in this corner and kind of sit. And of course, you got the gutter here as well, so a lot of water ends up in this corner. I've seen some of the older models where the whole, if it was wood, the whole thing is just rotted out on the corners. And eventually the whole side of the back rots out and it starts to actually sag. It gets onto the flooring inside and the whole thing sags and starts to fall apart. And a friend of mine showed he actually took his whole back of his Copper Canyon off and he had to replace the whole back. He redid the whole back and he actually ended up putting checker plate. I think I can find a photo for you, show you the before and after of his job. It's good warning for you. <laughs> Okay, there we be. It's kind of peeking in behind there. Looks good, the wood's dry. And this corner is pretty good too. A little bit of darkness there, but I think that's mostly dust that got in there. The internal wall has no moisture and this bottom piece on this side is okay. So, I'm just gonna get rid of all this uh, old butyl tape and all this old sealant use my scraper and scrape as much as I can get off. And I'll probably use some uh, mineral spirits and uh, LA's totally awesome cleaner, isopropic alcohol and get it all nice and clean. 
and also have to go inside the flashing too. So called a bit of an audible here and decided to hacksaw off the flashing up right near the roof there and I'll just use tape to cover it when I put it back just it was going to be too much of a hassle to take off all this butyl tape while it's hanging there easier to get it on the ground do it from here Okay, after a number of hours, finally got all that old butyl tape and almost all the silicone off of the side walls, prepped for resealing. Used a combination of stuff. The hive tool took the bulk of the stuff off, but then there was still a fine amount of that nasty silicone stuff left. So. Use some Goo Gone and some Mineral Spirits and the LA's totally awesome stuff. Also a, a plastic kind of spongy thing, what do you call it, scrubbing pads, scotch, scotch pads. And even some uh, plastic razor blades had to be brought in. These things work pretty good but they dull pretty quick. But hopefully that won't happen again. I'm not going to use like a silicone based product. I'm going to use the an alpha system stuff that I think will come off much easier if I ever have to do it again. Next task, change out that piece of wood that rotted. There she is there. Got myself a 2x4. Kind of made a curve with my hacksaw. And I'll show you where this thing was and how they mounted it. There we go. So you can see they just drove some giant staples right through there. I'm going to pull out those staples and I think I'm going to mount it using a, a bracket. I have this steel bracket with screw holes in it. I think I can figure something out that will hold that in place. Well, there's the fix. Put that wood in place, new wood, and I put that bracket in there, screwed it into the aluminum beam and then into the wood. Had to use this, uh, one of my handy dandy tools here. That allows me to drill on an angle. Worked out pretty good. So, we'll start uh, putting back the main boarding, screw it into place, and then we can get uh, working with that sealing tape. So here's what this tape looks like. A little selfie on the back and super uh, sticky stuff. Not quite as sticky as the roof patch tape I've used, so it does give you a little bit of leeway if you make a mistake as you're as you're applying it to the corner, kind of move it around. And it's got kind of a felt, felty feeling stuff on the back. So I've done a bit of it. What I did first is I got some. Uh, screws instead of staples and uh, put screws in where they had staples before where I'd taken some like you can see they used a staple while I just went along and used a screw instead. So I applied the tape to the bottom seam and this seam here and I'm just going to do the other side seam. driver's side corner bead in place and the bottom all screwed in. Now I'm going to do this final part here, passenger side corner bead. So what I did is I laid some uh, butyl tape. This is an Alpha Systems butyl tape, same stuff I used for my slide, uh, my slide repairs for resealing the flashing on the slide. 
I also used it for uh, when I changed the window. I'll link back to both those projects if you're interested. Anyway, I just thought I'd put the butyl tape on there so when I run the screws through it gets an extra layer of waterproofing on the screw holes. Okay, wow, well, we're about 85% there now. Corner beads back in place. Little plastic cover back in place. Looking pretty yellowed. I think uh, when I can, I'm gonna, if I can find a place that sells that stuff, I don't wanna be ordering it online and stuff. That stuff's still working, just basically it's cosmetic, so. Next time I find myself with the opportunity to get that stuff at a good price, I'll grab some of that. Also, the screws, I'd like to, I'd like to find some nice stainless screws for the, the exposed ones down there, but these will do right now. As far as the ladder goes, put that back in place. Put some of that uh, butyl tape behind it and re-screwed it in. What I did is I went with a little thicker thread. I used a screw that's uh, actually four particle boards, so it has much thicker uh, threads on it. So now that ladder is uh, a lot stronger down there. So like I said, it's just into some particle board, but I don't really use it much anymore. I, I use my uh, Warner ladder and go up onto the slide roof when I climb the roof. Anyway, I'm just waiting on my sealant. Lippard's sending me some, uh, they call it uh, non-sag sealant for doing sidewalls. So I'm just gonna trim any excess of that stuff that's sticking out and then we'll run a bead of caulking down each side. Not that I really think it really needs it that much, but you never know. Just a third layer of protection in there. Anyway, stay tuned. I haven't got it yet. Supposed to get it sometime today or tomorrow. Then we'll finish up the job and give you the final results. Oh, almost forgot. I gotta get up there on that corner bead and clean it really, really well. And I think I'm gonna use some of the Alpha Bond tape to uh, reseal the corner. When I mention the roof tape, this is what I'm talking about. This is actually the Alpha Bond tape. I'm going to use it. It's much like the Eternabond tape that I've used to seal a lot of my roof. Um, I have lots of videos on it. I'll link back to if you're interested in it. And there's also this Eterna Prime I'll put down first. Surface conditioner and adhesive enhancer. So between the two of those, I'll apply the tape. And then I use a seam roller to uh, activate it. Because a lot of these tapes are activated when you put a lot of pressure on them. This is actually a lot like that uh, seal right that I just put on there. Works pretty good. So for the final caulking sealant, I chose to use this Alpha Systems. I had Lippard send me some out, a couple tubes to try out. Uh, stuff looks pretty good. It's made in the USA. This is the non-sag, so you can put it on a vertical or sloped surface, and then it won't run down the side. Uh, it says on the back here, ideal for vertical or sloping applications, withstands all weather conditions, adheres to a variety of substrates, will not crack at minus 40. And also down here it says, excess can be cleaned with mineral spirits or paint thinner. So uh, there's a, tons of different ways to, to do this sealant caulking application if you go on youtube you'll find all kinds of different preferences um, so you know it's up to you how you want to do it i find a lot of arguments in the comments about different ways what i like to do is nip this end off pretty small so it's a pretty small hole coming out because you don't really need a lot for the seams um, i also usually like to apply it a little bit on a slant and kind of push as i go have the sealant being pushed into the crack rather than dragging it along. Uh, I find that forces the sealant up into the crack 
And then on this particular type here, because of the mineral spirits thing, what I did is I, I got a little rag and a little bit of mineral spirits and I would just wet my finger with the mineral spirits a bit and drag it along the seam just to, to finish it off and push the, the sealant in even more. And then I found the, the mineral spirits could clean up any excess. And usually after about you know half a day or so, I went back with a, with a plastic razor and I could get rid of even more. So it came out pretty nice, I think. So I found that worked pretty good and this sealant seemed to do a pretty good job. We'll see after a year or two how it holds up, but I think it'll be better than your standard, you know, if you're just gonna use like silicone. Other ones uh, on the market, there's this one called Pro, ProFlex um that's pretty good and some of the Sika sealants are pretty good and of course i think dicor has a sealant but i thought i'd give this stuff a, a try it's the same stuff i used on the roof so should be pretty good anyway let's give you a look at the finished job wind's kicking up pretty good here on the coast so i'm sorry if there's any wind noise in this video hopefully my muff will cover it anyway there we go let's go up the ladder and let you see how i finished off that uh, corner with the alpha bond tape there we go just kind of wrapped it around there and still we're going to put a bit of a uh, lap sealant around the top seam there Here's my bottom seam. A few places here that look black and like there's a crack there, but that's actually where some of that stuff kind of stuck out a bit. Didn't quite get it cut even. But overall, I'm pretty pleased with that. And uh, so we got three layers of protection there. We have that, that uh, seal tight tape. We have the butyl tape and then the final caulking around the outside. So I think we should be good for a number of years now as far as the back end of the old Cougar goes. Anyway, I have some more projects on tap as I think of them. I've got a few other things to do, so stay tuned. Till next time, Ray from loveyourrv.com. Thanks for watching, everyone. Cheers, folks. <laughs>